Coming up, why Notre Dame's quarterback situation is better than it's been in years and how the future could be even better. You are Locked On Irish, your daily podcast on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Irish. It is Tuesday, May 23rd, and thank you for making this your first listen of the day. As always, you can find the show wherever you get your podcasts, and if you want to watch along, you can do so on YouTube. Whether you're watching or listening, I appreciate you getting your day started here, and you can help out the show by hitting that subscribe button if you have not already. My name is Tyler Wojcik, and I'm the host. I'm a Notre Dame alum, and I've been podcasting about the football team since 2020. I'm also a producer for college football talent at the Fox Sports headquarters in Los Angeles. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And in today's episode, I'm going to take a look at how Notre Dame has managed the quarterback position over the past five years through recruiting and via the transfer portal, and then I'm going to evaluate the results on the field, plus I'll forecast the future of the position and discuss how Notre Dame can learn from its past success and failures to build a roster that is capable of competing for national championships. The reason I'm only going back five years to the recruiting class of 2019 is it's the last year that players from that class could be on the current roster. I know that with the COVID year, Notre Dame has a couple guys who are in their six years, like DJ Brown and Sam Hartman, but that's not the norm, so I'm only going to go as far back as 2019. This is part one of a series of similar episodes that I'll roll out over these next few weeks because I'm going to do the same exercise for each position group on the roster. We all know college football is a talent acquisition business, and I believe it's important to look at how Notre Dame has gone about adding talent to its roster over the years to figure out what's working and what's not. And that way, we'll have a better sense of where this team is at. Obviously, the transition from Brian Kelly to Marcus Freeman in the middle of that window that I'm using impacts how I'm going to judge the future because the people in charge of the program are almost completely different now. Um, But there's still some things we can take away from the end of the Brian Kelly era. So let's start by going over Notre Dame's quarterback commits since 2019. And I don't think I'm going to break any news here when I say that the Irish have not recruited this position well during that time. Going back to 2019, Notre Dame's quarterback commit that class was Brendan Clark, who was a three-star and the number 517 player nationally and the number 21 quarterback in the class, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. Brendan Clark eventually transferred to Old Dominion in November of 2021. He had this nagging knee injury that might have honestly led to Notre Dame's decision to get Jack home, but I'll get to that in a second. But Clark was really never fully healthy during his time at Notre Dame, and I think maybe it could have worked out for him if he had been able to... uh, get rid of that nagging injury, but that just wasn't the case. And also, Notre Dame had signed Phil Dracovic the year prior, who was a top 50 recruit and was set to be the quarterback of the future at Notre Dame. So I don't know if Notre Dame went into 2019 thinking they didn't need to go after a top quarterback because I think at that time there was still this idea that you should recruit a top quarterback every other year because then they'd be less likely to transfer. But I think over time, we've realized that guys might transfer anyway. So it's best to go out and get a top quarterback every single year if you can. Notre Dame didn't have that strategy then, but I think they're more willing to do that now. So 2019, Brennan Clark, that was an obvious miss. It's not really that surprising given his uh, recruiting ranking, but it was a miss indeed. 2020, Notre Dame signed Drew Pine, who was actually a four-star player and the number 2025 player nationally, the number 18 quarterback in his class. Obviously, we know that Pine started 10 games in 2022 as a redshirt sophomore, and it did not go super well, I would say. I mean, sure, there were some good moments with Pine out there, but there was never any moments where like, all right, Drew Pine is carrying this offense and he's going to lead the team to victory. A lot of times it felt like when Notre Dame did win with Pine at quarterback, they were winning in spite of him and not because of him. Now, Pine eventually transferred to Arizona State in January of 2022 once he realized that Notre Dame was going to bring in a transfer quarterback and that Pine was likely not going to retain his starting job that he was able to get after Tyler Buckner went out with an injury. And that leads us to 2021. When Notre Dame signed Tyler Buckner, the four-star, the number 71 player nationally in the class and the number 11 quarterback quarterback that year. At the time, Notre Dame picked Tyler Buckner over J.J. McCarthy, who was actually rated higher than Buckner, and eventually went on to play for Michigan and led them to the college football playoff just last season. And as we know, Tyler Buckner eventually transferred to Alabama in this past April. And it's easy to criticize this move in retrospect. Now, unfortunately for Buckner, Really, the entire trajectory of his career has been greatly impacted first by the COVID pandemic that held him out from his entire senior season. He was not 
able to play his senior year of high school. And then injuries that he sustained um, during his time at Notre Dame. He had that ankle injury his freshman year that kept him out of a couple games. Even some opportunities like the Wisconsin game. Like, had he been healthy, maybe Buckner could come into that game before Drew Pine, and then Drew Pine didn't have his moment. There. Now, that's obviously hypothetical. But injuries were just a problem throughout his time at Notre Dame. And then last year, obviously, suffered the shoulder injury that kept him out for the rest of the regular season after that Marshall game. And that same year, in 2021, Notre Dame added grad transfer Jack Cohn. And Cohn announced his commitment to Notre Dame on January 4th of 2021, just three days after Notre Dame lost to Alabama in the college football playoff semifinal that year. And I think... This was Notre Dame's first real venture into the grad transfer realm, especially at quarterback. We're like, okay, they're going to get a one-year rental guy. And it made sense at the time because Notre Dame's most experienced uh, quarterback at that point that was coming back that year was Drew Pine, and he had very minimal experience. He came in for one series against Alabama in that college football playoff semifinal when Ian Book went out with an injury. That leads us to 2022 when Notre Dame signed Steve Angeli, the four-star number 365 player nationally in the number 21 quarterback in his class. I'm going to be honest. This recruitment didn't make a ton of sense to me because he was a very early commit. He committed in, on March 4th of 2021, but this was Tommy Reese's guy. He really, really liked Angel. He liked his intel- intangibles, and he liked what he could do on the football field as well. Notre Dame started to recruit five-star quarterback Walker Howard pretty late in the process. I know that he actually came to Notre Dame for a visit. Um, I think a lot of people were surprised because Notre Dame wasn't really looking at another quarterback once they had Angeli committed. And like I said, Angeli was an early commit. So then out of nowhere, they get Walker Howard on campus. Walker Howard eventually went to LSU, and he is now at Ole Miss. So obviously things didn't work out. But Angeli was a good high school player. It's too early to tell if he's like a hit or miss, but I would say that I haven't seen any traits from him that blow me away, and we'll see what the um, what he's able to do this season as the backup. And then we get to 2023 when Notre Dame picked up Kenny Minchie, the four-star quarterback. He was the number 14 quarterback in his class. He was committed to Pitt for pretty much the entirety of his recruitment, but Tommy Reese was able to swing him at the very end. It's, it is a little bit ironic that Tommy Reese was able to get him and he was able to get Sam Hartman and then he immediately left, even though he worked really hard to get these guys to come to Notre Dame. At one point, Notre Dame was in the running for five stars, Jackson Arnold, Chris Vizina, and Dante Moore. And we all know what happened with Dante Moore. Notre Dame went all in on him and they came up short. They picked him over Jackson Arnold, who ended up at Oklahoma, and Chris Vizina, who ended up at Clemson. And you know what? Look, sometimes that happens, especially when you're dealing with quarterbacks of this pedigree, and Dante Moore is a really good player. I think if Notre Dame were to go back and fix things or do things over, rather, I think they'd look at Dante Moore's personality and his priorities and realize, hey, maybe NIL is a little bit more important to him than we thought at the time because he committed to Oregon and then he decommitted from Oregon and committed to UCLA extremely late in the process. But you know, such is the nature with high school quarterbacks, especially five stars. Notre Dame picked him. They didn't get him, but they were able to get Minchie, who's a very talented quarterback as well. And then obviously they added uh, grad transfer Sam Hartman in the transfer portal. Rumors started swirling before Wake Forest played the Missouri Tigers in the Gasparilla Bowl on December 23rd that Hartman was going to end up in the transfer portal, and Notre Dame was the favorite to land him. It was like the worst kept secret in college football. I remember watching that Gasparilla Bowl thinking, wow, am I really watching Notre Dame's future quarterback right now? Because he looks pretty damn good. And guess what? That's exactly what ended up being the case. Harbin officially entered the portal on December 27th and announced his commitment on January 5th. And now he is the starting quarterback at Notre Dame. So when you look back through this and what Notre Dame has done at the quarterback position over the past five years, I would say their recruiting grade is probably a C minus, honestly. And three of those guys I just mentioned have transferred out, but Notre Dame was able to make up for those losses in the transfer portal. If I were to give them a grade in the transfer portal at the quarterback position, I'd give it an A minus because Jack Cohn was a definitive up- upgrade in 2021 and would have been even better if the line wasn't so bad. I think if you look back to that season, it's fair to wonder why Notre Dame didn't adjust their offense to go to more of an up-tempo, quick pass passing game uh, so late in the season like they did. It started in that North Carolina game coming off the bye, and you wonder if Notre Dame had gone to that earlier, would they have been able to beat Cincinnati? I don't know, but I think that the line was really at fault there. It's not as much to do with Cone, but I think Cone provided a big boost to the offense that year. He was a big upgrade over Drew Pine, what he would have been that season. And then Notre Dame's decision to not get a transfer quarterback in 2022 really hurt him because they put all their eggs in the Tyler Buckner basket. He got hurt and it didn't work out. And then they were forced to play Drew Pine, a guy that they recruited years prior, who just clearly wasn't ready to be a starting quarterback for a team like Notre Dame uh, who wants to compete for a college football playoff. He just wasn't that caliber, and that's part of the reason why he's at Arizona State, because he saw the writing on the wall, he saw Sam Hartman coming in, and he saw Tyler Buckner in front of him and knew his position on the depth chart, and he left, which is fair. Like I, don't, I have no ill will towards Pine for that, and I understand why he did it, but I think that 
Notre Dame's recruiting misses is really what uh, led to that in 2022. It's unfortunate that what happened with Tyler Buckner, injuries happened. But now that Notre Dame has Sam Hartman, they've got the top quarterback to enter the transfer portal this past offseason. And the fact that Notre Dame was able to get him, even though led to the eventual transfer of Tyler Buckner, is a major win for the program. So coming up next, I'll explain how the addition of Sam Hartman makes this year's quarterback situation the best it's been in over a decade. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Personally, my favorite part about FanDuel is the instant payouts. It's way easier than any other platform I've used in the past and all my friends who use it say the same thing. There's no better place to bet all of the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks again for making Lockdown Irish your first listen of the day. Now that I've gone over how the Irish have recruited quarterbacks over the past five years, let's look at how that's led us to the present day. And Sam Hartman is the obvious starting quarterback at this point. Um, He's one of the most accomplished quarterbacks in all of college football. And honestly, the expectations for him in 2023 are incredibly high. He's a six-year senior. This is a guy who's played a ton of college football during his life. And he's a grown man playing quarterback um, and older than pretty much everyone else at the college level because he had that extra extra year of eligibility due to the COVID year. And I think if you were to pick numbers here, like some over-unders, I think 3,500 passing yards is the floor. 35 passing touchdowns is probably a good number as well. I know that seems pretty high, but if you look at what he's done this past two seasons, he's eclipsed 3,500 passing yards and 35 touchdowns both seasons. In 2021, he actually threw for 4,200 yards, and he had 39 touchdowns. In 2022, he threw for a little bit less uh, passing yards, but he also had 80 less attempts. He threw for 3,700 yards and 38 touchdowns. Notre Dame hasn't had a quarterback throw for more than 3,500 yards since 2009 with Jimmy Clausen. Now, Everett Golson did come really close in 2014, but he did not get to 3,500. And they also haven't had a quarterback throw for more than 35 touchdowns in a season since Brady Quinn in 2006. So Hartman is obviously a top 10 quarterback in college football. I think that's pretty fair to say that I don't I I can't hear an argument that Sam Hartman is not a top 10 quarterback in college football right now he's thrown he's in the top 20 in FBS history for most passing touchdowns thrown as well as yards so even though he's not top five he's still one of the best quarterbacks in college football and I think if he has a great year at Notre Dame that's going to elevate him into that top five definitively I think the fact that he played at Wake Forest in their record over the past few years I think that's why some people are hesitant to put him up there but he's definitely behind Caleb Williams. He's definitely behind Drake May. But then after that, I think that this year he could probably go toe-to-toe with anyone else. But my biggest concern about Hartman and how he's going to fare for Notre Dame this season is can he play at the level of Caleb Williams? Obviously, he's not as good as Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is the best player in college football, as much as that pains me to say. But he's unbelievable. He's one of the best players we've seen in years. And Notre Dame doesn't need... Sam Hartman to be better than him in that game. He just needs to be close. Can he be similar? Can he produce a similar level of output as Caleb Williams in that game? And he definitely has to outplay Kyle McCord, who is the likely starting quarterback at Ohio State, and Kate Klubnick, who will be the starting quarterback at Clemson this season. That's going to be a tall task. Those two teams have excellent skill players around them. I mean, Ohio State has Marvin Harrison Jr. uh, to throw to, and he's one of the best receivers that college football has seen in years. So it's going to be a tall task for Sam Hartman, but it's a great opportunity for him. He's going to be playing on the biggest stage a lot more often than he did at Wake Forest, to say the least. So I'm excited to see what he can do. But I I am a little bit concerned about how he's going to handle those bright lights because, frankly, we just haven't seen it yet with him. We know he's had a tendency to throw some interceptions in the past. If he throws a crucial one in those games, it could be the difference. But we don't know. I'm confident that Sam Hartman is going to be great for Notre Dame this season. Ian Book was a great college quarterback, no doubt, and he carried Notre Dame in some pivotal moments throughout his career. But Hartman is going to have to do more than that because the team around him isn't as good, and I certainly think he's capable of that. And it's going to be really exciting to see what he can do for Notre Dame this season. And I'll say this again, I think he's the best quarterback Notre Dame has had since Jimmy Clausen in 2009. And if he's able to play at that level with the team that Hartman has around him, I think Notre Dame is going to be in a great, great position this year. But who's behind him? So right now, it looks like the backup is going to be Steve Angeli. And I'm going to focus now on what Steve Angeli can do in 2023. Let's not talk about the future. Let's not talk about if he's going to be the starter in 2024 right now. Let's just focus on what Steve Angeli can provide for this team in 2023. The good thing about Steve Angeli is that quarterback coach Gino Gadulli is extremely eye on him. He had this to say to Patrick Engel during spring practice, quote, Steve Angeli has had a phenomenal spring camp up to this point. 
His decision-making has been great. His ball placement has been great. We have to find a way to get him more reps and continue to develop Steve. I think Steve has a shot to be a really great quarterback as well. I'm not in here just hyping everybody up, but I think all three of those guys are having a great camp. I enjoy Steve, and I think he's getting better every day, end quote. Now, it would be easy for me to dismiss this as coach speak and a way for Gino to try to help build in Jilly's confidence, especially if there was concern that he would leave in the transfer portal if Buckner had stayed, which I think was a very real concern from Notre Dame and the coaching staff. So I understand why they would be inclined to say positive things about him in order to keep him around. But on another hand, it's possible that Angeli was actually just really impressive during spring, and he looked really good in the spring game. He finished 8 of 12 passing for 72 yards in his action during the blue and gold game, and he looked comfortable out there. He looked good. He was able to move around. He was able to make some throws, and I was personally surprised. I did not have particularly high expectations for Angeli in that game, but I thought he really he looked good. And odds are we're probably going to see Angeli in some capacity this season. I'm not predicting that Harmon's going to get hurt or anything like that. He's going to miss a bunch of time, but... It happens all the time where a quarterback kind of takes a big hit, maybe needs a series to get back uh, on the field as he recovers from whatever it is, whatever injury he had on the sideline. So I think we're going to see him this year, hopefully not in any big time spots. And I think that a good thing for Angeli was that he went through the majority of his freshman season as the backup for Notre Dame. Like if Drew Pine had gotten hurt last year, then Steve Angeli was coming in as a true freshman. That's important to me because he had to prepare week in and week out like he was going to play. Like he had to be game ready and he had to understand the preparation that is required each and every week last season. That's the same situation he's in now. So I think he'll be better and more prepared for that aspect of it because of what he went through last season. Do I think Notre Dame can survive if Angeli is starting multiple games? Not really. But can he be a serviceable backup and who would keep things afloat if he has to come in for a few drives at some point? I think, yeah, he probably could do that. And then behind him, you've got Kenny Minchie, the true freshman. And Minchie is interesting because if you ask most people who is the quarterback of the future, most people would probably say Minchie. Part of that is because of his recruiting pedigree, but I also think he just has more natural, uh, just gifted traits. Like he's incredibly accurate, which is not something you can really teach, although I guess Jalen Hurts in the NFL is kind of changing that notion. But as far as this season goes, Angeli is definitely the backup right now, um, and he's ahead of Minchie on the depth chart. Could that change at some point this season? Potentially. And if that does, I think it bodes well for Notre Dame down the road because if, man, if Minchie clearly establishes himself as the backup but like at some point in the fall, that means that he's probably going to be ready to go to be the starting quarterback next season, and that could impact how Notre Dame approaches the transfer portal next year. But I'll get to that in segment three. Let's focus on 2023 because I do think that if there was a situation where Kenny Minchie had to come in and play in the field this fall, I don't think he would be afraid. By all accounts, Minchie has the right mindset. He has all the intangibles you'd love to see in a college quarterback, and Minchie has all of those. But then again, you're bringing in a freshman quarterback to play in, you know, in relief duty this fall. Like that would be a lot to ask of any player. Even if Minchie was like a top three quarterback in the class, that'd be a tall task. And now I, I say this all the time that Trevor Lawrence kind of ruined expectations for all future freshman quarterbacks because what he did that season in 2018 was insane. He led Clemson to a national championship the first time a true freshman quarterback ever led their team to a national championship, but that is not the norm. Most freshman quarterbacks really struggle when they have to come in during their freshman season, and I think that probably would be the case if Minchie has to come in and play like real snaps for Notre Dame. I'm not talking garbage time where he's just getting out there, handing the ball off, maybe throwing a screen. I don't think that's going to be the case. So I think that Minchie has all the tools you want, and he's going to be really good down the road. But for this season, I feel comfortable as the number three, and I feel like he'll be good against, like getting reps against the scout team and things like that and going against the one. So my big picture takeaway is about the quarterback room in 2023. Am I concerned about the depth? Absolutely. But I'm also very confident in Hartman's talent and his experience, coupled with the fact that he has a great offensive line to protect him. So I feel very good about the quarterback situation this year. Honestly, better than I've felt in a really long time. Like, 2020, I felt really good about Notre Dame's quarterback because I loved Ian Book, but I think Hartman is just a different player than Ian and has the ability to elevate the entire team and carry the team uh, during some big stretches this season. I've also heard some people say that Notre Dame should not have taken Hartman this season because it jeopardizes the 2024 season. That makes no sense to me. Hartman is clearly better than Tyler Buckner. He proved that in spring practice, and that's why Tyler Buckner transferred. What do you want Notre Dame to do? Is Notre Dame supposed to accept having a worse quarterback this season, even though Hartman, who's a better quarterback, wants to come and play for Notre Dame this season and could be the difference in a couple wins this season. Like, Notre Dame's supposed to just say, uh, uh, we don't want that. We want to be in a better position next year. Like, no, that's not how this works. The goal every year is to win and win a lot of games. Notre Dame can go to the college football playoff with Sam Hartman. 
Maybe they could have gone with Tyler Buckner. I don't know, but I know that Sam Hartman is better, and he proved that already. So is Notre Dame going all in on this season? Of course they are. They should go all in on every season. That's the whole point of this. You've got to do whatever you can to get as much talent on the roster as possible to put yourself in the best position to succeed, especially with Notre Dame's schedule this year. They're going to need a guy at quarterback who can carry them, and I think Sam Hartman is that guy. So look, I understand that Notre Dame's 2024 season is it's, it's in flux right now. We don't know who the starting quarterback is going to be, but I feel very good about the quarterback in 2023, and that's because of one guy, Sam Hartman. So on that note, let's take a look ahead to the future of Notre Dame's quarterback position coming up after this. Okay, so we've gone over how Notre Dame has recruited the quarterback position in the past, and we've looked at the present situation on the Notre Dame depth chart at quarterback. So let's look ahead here to the future of quarterback, and let's start on the recruiting trail. So Notre Dame is in a great spot in the class of 2024. They've already got C.J. Carr committed, and he's a very, very talented high school prospect, and also he's not dramatic, which is a win. By the way, have you guys heard Brent Venable's quote to The Athletic where he was like, he doesn't like signing guys who come with a lot of drama, despite the fact that he signed Peyton Bowen in what is quite literally the most dramatic recruitment I've ever seen. Not even just for Notre Dame, for literally anyone. That situation was insane. So I, that was like the most hypocritical thing you could ever say, which I guess is class. Coaches are hypocritical all the time, despite the fact that they try to act like they're not. So anyway, back to CJ Carr. He's the number 37 player overall in this class, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. He is the number five quarterback in this class. He is the top-rated quarterback commit Notre Dame has had in a really long time. Is CJ Carr going to live up to the hype at Notre Dame? I have no idea. I don't. I think he's a really good player. I have no clue. And anyone who tells you that he's guaranteed to be great is lying to you. They might, they might end up being right, but no one knows because the quarterback position is the hardest position to al- evaluate in all of sports. It happens from the college to the NFL level. It happens all the time with high school to college. We've been over this on the podcast. We've gone over how many busts there are of top five quarterbacks, how many busts are in top 10 quarterbacks every single year. So I don't know. But I do know that Notre Dame has a much better chance of hitting on a quarterback prospect when they are rated as high as Carr is. So it's great that Notre Dame has a guy like C.J. Carr coming to Notre Dame soon because I think he gives him a shot. You know what I mean? I don't know if he's going to be good, but he's got a better shot than most because of what he's shown at the high school level. And I feel really good about what they have in him. As for 2025, Notre Dame does not have a quarterback commit in that class currently, which is fine. I mean, it's still so early in that cycle. Um, And right now, what I do really like about what they're doing is they're going after the top guys in the country right now in the class of 2025. A couple guys they're hot on. Bryce Underwood, he's a five-star. He's the number one quarterback in the class. But right now, that does seem like a long shot. But you know what? They're in the mix. They're giving it a shot. They have a better chance at George McIntyre, another five-star quarterback. Gino Gadulli has already visited his high school twice, so Notre Dame is being pretty aggressive on that front. And then there's Deuce Knight, who right now is probably the clubhouse leader to be the quarterback commit to Notre Dame in this class. He's the number 133 player in Ashley, the number seven quarterback in the class. He's, he's already visited Notre Dame in the spring. He had a great visit, but don't get me wrong. There's a lot of really big-time programs out there who are also looking at him. So we'll see how it plays out, but it's still very early. Obviously, I'm not concerned about the fact that Notre Dame doesn't have a quarterback commit in the class of 2025. But if we look at the depth chart for next season, there's a lot of unknowns because it looks like it's going to be either Kenny Minchie or Steve Angeli. Whoever solidifies themselves as a better quarterback after the season is going to likely be the starting quarterback next season. And then, honestly, if Angeli gets passed up by Minchie, odds are he's probably going to transfer. That's just the nature of the business right now. If you get passed up by a younger guy, you're probably not going to play at Notre Dame, and I don't think Steve Angeli is going to be content being a backup for his entire college career. So that begs the question, could Notre Dame add a quarterback in the transfer portal? It's definitely possible. It's impossible to predict which quarterbacks are going to be available. But if another top five to 10 quarterback wants to come to Notre Dame next year in the same way that Sam Hartman did, then Notre Dame is pretty much going to have to take him. Unless we see some insane growth from Kenny Minchie or Steve Angeli over the course of the next year, that would be the only way Notre Dame would turn that down. And even then, it's almost like just take a guy because, like I said, right now you only have you're going to have three scholarship quarterbacks next year. So I think Notre Dame could be a very attractive destination next year for a transfer quarterback. If Hartman ends up playing the way that I think he will this season, that would be two grad transfer quarterbacks coming to Notre Dame and having really strong seasons in Sam Hartman and Jack Cohn. So that's proof of concept that if another grad transfer quarterback wants to come over, they can say, hey, we've done it before. We've done it twice, and it worked really well for both guys. It's going to work well for you. Plus, Notre Dame's skill players next year might be even more loaded than this year. Like, Imagine if Tobias Merriweather takes the leap. 
if Jane Greathouse shows that he can be a really, really good college receiver right away in his freshman season, if Rico Flores steps up, Deion Colsey, Jaden Thomas, if Mitchell Evans, the tight end, steps up and he shows that he can be as good as some of the great Notre Dame tight ends in the past, Notre Dame's probably going to have a great offensive line. The running back room looks pretty good. If Audric Estime comes back, you're looking at the talent around him, and you're like, wow, if you were a grad chance for quarterback and you're looking at that situation and you're thinking, man, they've got some weapons for me to throw to. That's going to be a really attractive spot for a potential transfer quarterback. Now, I will say that I don't love the idea of just every year relying on getting a grad transfer quarterback. I think the best case scenario for Notre Dame, honestly, is that Kenny Minchie, even if he doesn't play a ton this year, if he shows that he's a really talented quarterback and he's ready to go by his sophomore season, that would be great. Notre Dame was ready to go with Tyler Buckner during his sophomore year. I don't see a reason why they couldn't um, go all in on Kenny Minchie next year if he shows that he can handle it. And so far from what we've heard, he had a really good spring despite the unfortunate spring game. So it's possible. It's possible that Kenny Minchie started. It's also possible that Steve Angeli just, you know what, he shuts up the haters and the doubters like me, and he gets really good, and he can be a good quarterback next year. That's also possible. He'll be in his junior season. Um, and as we've gone through in the past, a lot of the quarterbacks that come into Notre Dame and the ones that are the higher-rated quarterbacks coming out of high school, they don't pan out. And the guys who are not as highly recruited, they end up being the starter. It happened with Deshaun Kaiser. It happened with Drew Pine. Um, it's happened with Ian Book. Like, there's plenty of evidence to show that Notre Dame, the higher-rated guys just have not worked out as much in the past. Now, hopefully that changes because I think that would bode much better for Notre Dame in the future. But Notre Dame has been able to shore up their misses on the recruiting trail with high-quality additions in the transfer portal. Like I said, I don't want that to be the plan year in and year out. But it has worked before, and I'm not going to say that it's going to be you know a ticket to the college football playoff every year. Like Odds are you're not going to have a Sam Hartman that wants to come to Notre Dame every single year. But Notre Dame's quarterback recruiting is definitely on the rise. They've got a great quarterback on the way in 2024. Kenny Minchie was really solid. They're recruiting better in the position over the past two years, and they're already going for the top guys in 2025. If they're able to land any of the guys I just mentioned, that would be three top quarterback prospects in a row, which is really, really good for Notre Dame and a lot better than what it's been in the past. So if Notre Dame is able to keep that going and they add another top prospect and they continue on that trend, then the present and the future of the position looks incredibly bright and a great sign for the program in its entirety going forward. That's going to do it for me today. Thanks again for making this your first listen of the day. On the way out, remember to subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts and give us a follow on Twitter at Lockdown Irish, on Instagram at Lockdown Irish Pod, and my personal Twitter account at Tyler Wojak. That's at Tyler W O J C I A K. I'll see you guys tomorrow.